Hello once again, everybody. It's so good to see everybody. Wasn't that a great time of worship? I don't know about you, but man, I, I love, I mean, I love being online and watching it online, but boy, there's nothing like being in a room full of people saying that Jesus is the only way. <laughs> man, that was awesome. I, I can't tell you how much I've missed being in a room with people going after God and declaring who he is and by the way, my name is Eric Bucci. I'm the lead pastor here at Cornerstone Church. And if this is your first time here today, I personally want to welcome you. Thank you so much for coming into our living room. It's so good to see you. And can we welcome everybody a nice, big, loud, big, big, loud. Welcome everyone that's watching online as well. Yeah. You are welcome to be here and feel free to say hello or whatever you'd like to do online. We're so glad that you're here today. And we are all about uh, helping people come to know Jesus. That's what it's all about, everybody. It's about Jesus and him crucified and him raised from the dead because it's in him we have our freedom. It's all about Jesus. Nothing else matters but Jesus, and that's what kings us together. So we're so delighted that you're here today. Uh, and um, just to let you know, uh, everyone that we have small groups coming, if you'd like to have a small group, let us know. We're going to have groups that are, like we'll have a sermon on Sunday and have small groups. Yeah, two or three people meet over a cup of coffee at... Dunkin' Donuts, maybe Starbucks, or a real coffee shop. Anyhow, but uh, you can go ahead and do that, meet with each other, and we really want to encourage you to get connected, especially during these times. It's important. I really believe the Lord is, really wants to get our church, one of our emphasis this fall, is to get us connected to such a degree where everyone that's here has someone they can call, and that if something happens, we can look out for each other. I think it's so important at this time to pray for each other, look out for each other, and that everyone has someone they can call and know that someone cares about them. That's so important. If anything has, has taught us through this COVID how important it is, and, and I'm really alarmed the amount of, of suicides are, are, all, are already reached their pit. More suicides are taking place up to this point than all of last year. There's more drug abuse and more overdoses today. There are people that need to know us, to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are his representation. And it's important that we work together and reach people, because I believe there's more days coming. I hate to tell you, everybody, but there's more days coming, and we got to be ready for it, okay? So let's get into our, now that you're encouraged, uh, <laughs> let's get into our, our message today, which is uh, basically we're starting a new series called The Way, The Truth, and The Life. And uh, how many of you like, uh, how many of you are good at directions that here this morning? You're really good. I mean, you just got like, you're like a bird. You had this met metallic thing in your brain. You know where to fly. Okay, I don't know what happened, but when I, when I was being born in my mother's womb, I think God forgot to put the direction gene in me. I, I, I do, I'm terrible. I mean, it's amazing I got here this morning. I almost need a GPS when I get up in the middle of the night to use the restroom. I'm terrible. I'm absolutely horrible. And in fact, I want to thank God for, for the marriage counseling I've received from Siri and GPS. And now my favorite marriage counselor is Waze. Uh, Waze is awesome. It's, say, it's really helped our marriage because I used to blame Sandra when we used to get lost, but now it's Waze's fault. So, uh, but I, I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me a number of years ago, about 30 years ago. Yeah, I can say that now. 30 years ago, I was in college, a home for a break. My parents used to live in Hamden, and I was going to Vales University in Springfield, Missouri. My dear friend, my, one of my best friends, Jeff Burnett, uh, I was in his wedding. He was in my wedding. And we, we just, uh, he's a pastor now in West Virginia. God's country down there, and he came out to fly to see me in the summer, and so I picked him up from Bradley International Airport with my Escort GT at the time, and I picked him up, and I got in the car. Hey, Jeff, so good to see you, right? We had a brand new cassette of a band that we like to follow. It was a brand new release we're excited about. You know, cassette, by the way, it's a plastic thing. It's like plastic, and it's got like this little like tape that has a, and you put it in a, Okay. I don't know, it, cassettes, yeah. Anyhow, so we put the cassette that had Dolby on it, 
You don't know what that is either. Okay. So we put the cassette in, and we hit off the highway. It was foggy out. I couldn't see very well. Maybe about 100 yards at the very most of visibility. So we got in there, and I'm listening to this, uh, to this tape. I'm like, wow, Jeff, how you doing? It's talking, talking about... Talking about girls, listen to rock and roll. We had a good time. And we're just driving along, talking about that, talking about various things. And, and just we're talking and talking. The, the, uh, the, the new release finishes. It starts playing again. And we keep on talking and talking. I'm supposed to drive back to, you know, Connecticut, Hampton. And all of a sudden, I see a sign, welcome to Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff goes, I thought you lived in Connecticut. I said, I do. Then what are we doing in Vermont? I said, I have no idea, Jeff. So I drove an hour and 20 minutes out of the way because I was not paying attention. Now, please understand, we had no GPS back in those days. We didn't have, we barely, and we went had Del Monte cans and strings. We didn't even have phones. No, we had phones, but we had no GPS in those days. If you wanted a map, you'd have to download it off your old PC with Windows Windows 95 wasn't even out yet. I mean, this was just at the dark ages. And you'd have to, you read it, and you'd have, to get a, you'd have to get an atlas, and you'd have to get a map, and once you open the map, you could never put it back. And so I, I didn't know what to do. We pulled over to a convenience store, found out what to do. I said, Jeff, I don't know what to do. Said, well, why don't you go back the same way you came? I'm like, oh, that, that's smart. So we got back in the car, we went. Well, how many of us maybe feel that way in life? You, you, just, you think you're going the right direction. I mean, we're having a good time in the car. We're having a good time. We're having good fellowship. We're enjoying each other and, and telling what's going on in our lives. We're having a fantastic time. We're happy. But all of a sudden, you wake wait a minute. How did I end up in this situation? How did I end up in it? She just served me pay. He just served me pay. How did I end up? I, what do you mean I didn't get into my college? I, I applied for it. What do you mean I lost my job? What do you mean? And you don't know what's going on. How did I end up here, right? I, I don't understand how I got here because the truth of the matter is direction matters. In fact, I like this quote. If you don't change direction, you'll end up where you're headed. Now, I know, whoa, that's really deep. Yeah. If you don't change direction, you're going to end up where you're headed. And a lot of times, we think that good intentions and a right heart will get us to where we need to be. But that's not true. Good intentions and a right heart is important. But direction matters. Direction trumps everything else. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not getting political. I was biding my time while I was driving. Here we go. Okay. Thank you, everybody. If you don't change your direction, you end up where you don't want to go. And so I want to talk today uh, about a couple of things, and it's this. It's about direction and what it means in our lives. I think right now, more than ever, we need to know which way to go, right? What, God, what am I supposed to do? And, and it's very interesting, because right now in the, in the world we're living in, everything is kind of unpredictable, isn't it? I mean, who, whoever would have thought 2020 would have been like this? I mean, January was like, 30 years ago, right? I mean, look at all the stuff that's happened. What do we do, God? What do we do with this economy? What do we do with, what do I do in the future? What's going to happen? And we don't know what to do. And we're like, which way do I go? And this is what happened to the Jesus' disciples. In the book of John, they were uh, about their business, and Jesus started saying to them, oh, by the way, I'm going to have to die, and all this. What? Do not let your hearts be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you. He started telling them, and so where I am, you may be also. And Thomas is like, we have no idea what you're talking about, Jesus. And for those of you that grew up in the 1980s, it was, what are you talking about, Willis? Remember that? Okay, you guys are old. All right. No, we don't know, Lord. You know where I'm going? He's no, we don't know, Lord. And Thomas said, we have no idea where you're going. Have you ever asked the Lord, what, God, what are you doing right now in my life? God, what are you doing in the world right now? I have no idea where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus, we want to know, how do we know the way? How do we handle 2020? God, should I go to a community college? Should I go to a tech school? Should I not do that? Should I do this? God, should I move to Florida? God, should I retire? Should I leave this job? Should I even, you want me to even marry God? Do you want me to divorce? Or you ask all these questions, and you're like asking God for direction. God, what do you want me to do with this? How can we know the way? I don't know the way. How can we know the way? You know what Jesus says to him? This is what he says. Jesus told him, I am. Let me stop there one second. The Greek words used for I am in the Septuagint. The Septuagint is a Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible. When Moses was on the mountain and, he, and, and Moses asked God, who should I say that sent me? He says, tell him the great I am, which means I am. God is I am dot, dot, dot. He's everything. 
So what does Jesus say? I don't know the direction. I am. I'm everything. I am. I'm the what? I'm the way. Today we're talking about the way. I am the way. I am the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Now this is going to offend many people in the world. How can you say that Jesus is the only way? I just said it. He's the only way. But what about people that were born in the Brazilian rainforest? How are they going to know God? I don't know, but they're going to have to go through Jesus. And Jesus told us to go spread the good news. Everyone, all religions have to go to Jesus. And Jesus is the only way. Yes, it is exclusive. It's so exclusive, Jesus died for everybody. And there is a way that seems right unto man. Jesus is the way. And so I'm not here, to, I don't choose, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a courier of the good news. And the truth of the matter is that Christ loves us. And everyone has to go through Jesus. And that's why we are here to spread the good news, except through me. We'll, we'll deal with these topics at a later time. People have a lot of questions about various things. But let me go ahead and start with our first point today is this. Direction, not intention, determines destination. Can we repeat this out loud? Direction... Not intention determines destination. I read this book a number of years ago from Andy Stanley. I never forgot the statement. Fantastic statement. Direction, not intention, determines destination. If, if, if my wife and I and our family, we pack our minivan and, and we get snacks and we get beef jerky and we have waters and we're saying, we're going to go to Disney World because right now Disney World has a great discount. I only promise you have to wear a mask when it's humid. Can you imagine that? So we decide we're going to go to Disney World. And then all of a sudden, we, we get together. We, we pray. Lord, we pray for traveling mercies. We have the church interceding for us as we go to Disney and as we go into Star Wars rides and all that. We're, we're excited. We're asking you guys to pray for us as we go internationally in Epcot. Anyhow, so we, we're praying for you to, as we go down. So we pray. We get, in our, we get in our minivan. I hit a 95, and I go north. Now, and I keep on driving. And we're, we're praying, we're watching things on the video screens, we're having a good time, we're having praise and worship, we're loving each other. But how many folks know we can go north as much as we like, we can have good intentions, but we're not going to end up in Disney World. Why? Direction, not intention, determines destination. Many of us believe if you have a good heart, that's all that matters. Now, I granted, I'm really happy that we care now about hearts. Because there was a time where we'd celebrate someone's ability more than their hearts. But now, if we're on a soccer team, everyone gets a trophy because we have good intentions, right? How many folks know when you graduate school, you don't get, you don't get passed because you have good intentions, you get passed because you have the right answer. And so direction, not intention, determines destination. So if you're driving the wrong direction, I don't care how wonderful you think it is, and you're going the wrong direction, you're not going to get there. So, you know, many people say, well, gee, I, I want to a, I wanna go to a great school, a great college and have a, you know, have a scholarship. Okay. But, you know, but are you going to school? Yeah, once in a while. Are, are you studying for tests? No. Are, are you preparing yourself? Are you getting uh, extracurricular activities? No. Uh, okay. I just do what I do when I want to do it, but I'm going to get in. Why? Because I want to. If you go on that road, your only option would probably be community college. Not that there's anything wrong with community college. I'm just, I'm, not, I'm just telling you. Where's the scholarships? The road you're on determines your destination. If you want to have a, 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 a wonderful life with God, and every, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you look at, which I struggle with too, is my phone. And I get sucked into social media, and it just like, it sucks me in. I'm there for an hour before I even talk to God. But first thing in my mind is social media. How am I going to grow in God? Uh, whatever you go, uh, and if you want to have a good marriage and, and you're not investing in your marriage, not spending time in your marriage, and what happens? And this has happened to me, by the way. I've wasted sometimes time. Direction, not intention, determines destination. Or I want to get in shape. You know, this COVID 19, now it's COVID 5 for me. But, you know, <laughs> I, I, want to, I want to lose some weight, and you go to Dunkin' Donuts and have a, have a half a dozen of donuts every day, and you want to get in shape. That's decoration, not intention, right? Or you say, I'm going to get in shape, and you join the gym, and you get a pelican. Is that what they call them? What do they call those bicycles? 
I call it a pelican. What is it called? Peloton. Okay, I, I just I should get a free one now because I mentioned it. But anyhow, so you get a Peloton, right? You have it in your basement, and you buy all the latest. You go to the mall, and they had the special store that you can buy all this workout clothing, thirty dollars a month. It's crazy. Now you do all these things, right? You get online, you have all these groups. But if you don't go to the gym and you don't work out, you can join every single gym in the world, right? Because direction, not intention, determines destination. But why is it? In our normal lives, we don't get this. This is like so obvious, right? It's like ridiculously obvious. But why don't we get it, everybody? The question is, what direction are we going today? The Bible says in Proverbs, there is a way that seems right to a man or a woman, but ends in the way of death. In fact, the Bible even says this. This is Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 7. It says this. Enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction and those who enter it are many. Just because everyone's doing it does not mean it's right. When I grew up, my parents said, if your friends jumped off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge? I said, yes, with a bungee cord. Now I say the same thing to my children. Just because everyone does it doesn't mean it's right. Unfortunately, the morality of our country is going bad. And if we do what everyone says, we're in deep Kimchi, as they say in South Korea. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way, who's the way? Jesus, that leads to life, is narrow. And those who find it are few. Not because it's not available. Because we want to do it my way. You see, the Bible says so clearly in James 2.26, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Just because you know the right things. It's because you can recite memory verses. It's because you can tell stories. But if you're not going the right way, it doesn't mean much, everybody. I mean, yes, it's true. God judges the heart, and that's important. But your heart should eventually inform your feet. If your heart does not inform your feet, I wonder if your heart is really changed. Direction matters, everybody. Direction matters. See, direction, not intention, determines destination. Here's another one. Divine direction begins with submission. You know what submission means? Submission. Here's God's way. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. I'm di- no. I'm going to submit to God's ways. I'm going to submission. So divine direction begins with submission. Without submission to your own ways and your own feels, feelings, you're not going to get where you need to go. And Jesus says it so clearly. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And by the way, the fact that it says it twice is like the person's real religious. Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say. For whoever comes to me and hears my sayings, you may know the sayings, and does them, I will show you what he's like. He's like the wise man that built his house upon the rock. And when the rains came, the floods came up, the old song goes, what happened? The house stood. Why? It was built upon the rock. He heard the words and did it. But the, the foolish man who hears the words and might even know more words than the wise man, but doesn't put them to practice, what's going to happen? It's going to, great words, it's collapse. Why? Because direction, not intention, determines your destination. So divine direction begins with submission. Are you willing to submit your own thoughts, your own feelings? And number three is this. Attention determines direction. What you focus on, you will drive towards. We talked about this many, many times. What you feed leads. What entertains you, trains you. Wherever you look, whatever you, whatever you put your eyes, you will go towards. Make no mistake, everybody, what you focus upon. You will drive what you look at. This is the way life is. What are you focusing on? We, we're making a rule here in our office. We're, we're tired of blaming COVID for everything. Every time there's a problem, it's COVID. Well, let's go. I, I gained some weight. Why? COVID. I'm a COVID-5. Maybe some of you are a COVID-20. I'm a COVID-5. I'm going to be COVID-15 soon. All right. But anyhow, so we blame COVID for everything, right? We find an excuse. Now, is it legitimate? Yeah. But if you continue to look at problems, you can't have solutions and problems at the same time. Choose one. Right? So attention determines direction. Why not look for the promise instead of the problem? Right? Let's look for answers and drive towards those. Let's drive to where God would have us. 
You see, this is what Jesus says. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your whole body. When your eye is healthy, you're looking at the right things, basically. I don't have time to break it all down. Your whole body is filled with light. See, back in those days, they used to believe. How many of you have been driving at night, and, and there's an animal, like a deer or something, and you see its, head, you see its lights? I didn't know they had battery-operated deer. No, it's because the light is shining out of their eyes. And so they used to believe partially. So what happens is your eyes like a lamp. So you see the light. The light gets in your eye, and that's what you see, what you drive towards. All right? So your eye is like a lamp, Jesus says, that provides light for your body. It shows you the way. What you look at is the light you see. What you look at is the light you see. What are you looking at? What am I looking at, right? When your eye is healthy, you're looking at the right things, your whole body is filled with light. Conversely, but when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with what? Darkness. And the light you think you have is actually darkness. If we keep looking at the ways of the world and judge our behavior based upon poles, what's going on, what's going to happen is the light you think is light will become darkness. The Bible says that the devil is an angel of what? Light. Looks right, feels right, but it's not right. So what you look at determines what you drive. What are we looking at, everybody? I love what it says in Psalm 119, 35. The psalmist says this. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in them. I can't tell you how important it is for me to read my word, to read the Bible. I don't always get it every day, but most days I get it. I've been doing it for over 20 years now. Every day, I read through the Bible every year. And I'm not saying that to, no, just about 15 to 20 minutes a day. Sometimes I take longer. But I start delighting him in his commandments, and it gives me sight. It shows me, the Bible says, your word is a light unto my path. You want to know the path. But yeah, but I need to know. Ah, just take each step of the way. It says here, lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in them. Incline my heart to your testimonies, and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at what? It may not be sin, but is it worthless? I thank God there's filters now. I can take 20 years off my face. Anyhow, I can even get myself higher cheekbones. I don't look like a, a German model, but that's beside the point. Turn your eyes from looking at worthless things and give your life in my ways. What are we looking at, everybody? Right? I don't want to look at worthless things. If I look at worthless things, guess what I become? Not to God, but your life becomes worthless. That's what we not, not want to do. You see, there's no quick fix for being lost. Just like I drove to Vermont, I was lost. You have to submit yourself to the directions God has for you. To get from where we don't want to be to where we do not want to be requires two things. A change of direction. Are you willing to change your direction? Are you willing to do that? Change of direction in time. You know, I mean, we're not like, we're not like automobiles. You know, if, you, if your alternator goes, you have no power in your car. You bring it to the garage, they change the alternator, it's fixed. But in life, you make mistakes. It took you a while to get there, it might take you a while to get out. I have people say, well, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to forgive my, my spouse this week. A week later, it doesn't work. Give it time. It might take six to 10 months, 12 months, a couple of years. Do not give up. Keep going in the right direction. Don't give up. Change your direction in time. We'll get you to your destination. It took an hour and a half to get from Vermont back to Connecticut. Maybe some of you have taken a detour five years. It might take you five years to get back where you need to be. That's not fair. It's called life. God forgives you, but there's still, there's still consequences for what takes place. You see, the Bible says this, and let not us grow weary. Yeah, it, gets, it gets tiring. While doing good, poor what? In due season. It might have to go through a season, everybody, of not having what you want. You might have to go through a season of pain to get your gain. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. In my early 20s, uh, just out of college, uh, a year after college, I was working, and my whole life that I planned and had everything figured out fell apart. I had everything planned out. 
thought things were going to go a certain way, and it did not go that way. And I, didn't, I was clueless. Scott, what do you want for my life? It was a dark time in my life, early 20s. And I, for anyone out there right now that's trying to figure a life out, I get it. Everyone's getting married. Everyone's having kids. People are getting new jobs. You go to church on Sunday. Everyone's paired off. Even the squirrels are paired off in the parking lot. And you're like, I'm all by myself, God. And you're like, God, what do you want me to do, God? Well, what's going to happen to me, God? And you wouldn't know what to do. And I remember one day I was reading, my, reading the word of God while I was in graduate school. And I read this, Psalm 25. And this, the, the Lord just spoke to me through this verse. To such a degree, I even wrote a song from this verse. It says, show me your ways. Notice, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lord, show me your ways, what you're like. And teach me your paths. How do I go? Teach me. Teach requires what? Practice. Show me your ways, O oh Lord. Lead me in your what? Truth. And teach me. Now, if we stop there right now, for you're the God of my salvation. Stop right there. Cool. Okay, God, show me your ways. Show me your path. And show me your truth. Good, I'm ready to go. I love this next section of the scripture verse. You are the God of my salvation. Here we go. On you... I will wait all the day. In other words, it's real-time dependence upon God. God, I'm listening to you. What are you saying? And so when I didn't know what was going to happen in my life, I didn't know what was going to take place. I pulled my guitar out, in the key of D, and I, 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 wrote the, I basically put music to this, and it went like this. I used to sing this every day. <clears throat> Show me your ways. Oh, Lord, teach me your paths. Oh, Lord, lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. And on you I will wait. All of the day, show me your way. I had no idea that I'd be standing on the stage today, married to a beautiful woman from Columbia, Sandra, and they had three beautiful children. But you know what I did? I sang that song. I believed that song. And God showed me his ways. I did not know. One step ahead. One step ahead. One step ahead. And I started doing what God called me to do. Go in the right direction. And I ended up in the right place. I'm so thankful for where I am today. I'm thankful for what God has given me. Amen. <laughs> There's something about song. Get into praise and worship. Because what it does, it helps marinate your brain in the truth that gets down to your spirit. What do we do? Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, that's the people in the Bible, let us throw off everything that hinders us. Even sometimes good things can hinder us. And the sin that so what? Easily entangles us. And let us run with what? Perseverance, the race marked out for us. God has a race for you to run, only for you to run, not everybody else. Fixing Focusing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. I like what it says in the King James Version. The author and the completer open up my heart. God, write on my heart what you'd have for me. That's what we are. Are you willing to take off? Stop running your own direction and run his direction. It might take some time to get unlost. We need a real time. Remember I said before? I said right here, and on you I wait all my days. And on you I wait all the day. You need a real time relationship with Christ. Don't just get rules and regulations. We don't want you to live for God. In this church, we don't believe in living for God. It doesn't work. We want you to live with God. Because when you live with God, you will live for him. Case in point, as we conclude with one more illustration, I, we were driving to go to Sight and Sound, which is a great place in, in Lancaster, and uh, we were driving on some, some Jersey thing, some Jersey highway, and, and Way says, it's beautiful, I'm flying, you know, the music's pumping, I'm going, the kids are happy, no one's arguing, it's fantastic, right? 
and a full tank of gas. We're going, you know, flying within, within reason. And, you know, and we're driving them by, and all of a sudden it's like, way he says, get off at exit 31. I'm like, why am I going to get off at whatever exit it was? Why am I going to get off right now? I'm flying. No, Ways doesn't know what it's talking about. So I didn't listen to the ways, the truth, and the life. And all of a sudden, there was a sea of red lights. Oh, no. And we were in traffic for over an hour because I did not listen to the real time. I had the right directions. I had the right destination. But I didn't have the real time going. I didn't listen to the real time. You see, Jesus is like ways. And he's like, he's, he has a cloud. <laughs> right? In the Old Testament, where they used to follow the crowd, cloud, not the crowd, don't follow the crowd, follow the cloud. And the cloud is God's presence. He will lead you. Real time. Know the word of God. Get to know his voice in the real time, right here, right now. And so that's what makes Waze so good, by the way. I, I don't work for Waze, but Waze will tell you what's going on. It will tell you an accident ahead. It will tell you a dead animal on the road. I'm like, where's it? Oh, that's a squirrel. Hey, people even register squirrels. So it's fantastic. So God wants to show you the ways. He is the ways. But we got to follow the cloud. The cloud is his direction. It says in the Old Testament, when the Israelites were in the desert, they didn't go anywhere until the cloud moved. That's real time. And on you, I will wait all of the day. Are you going to wait on the name of the Lord? So let me ask you guys a question. We already prayed to give your life to Christ today. So if you, if, you can, if you want to give your life to Christ for the very first time and you want someone to help you along the process, you want to just go ahead and text BEGIN to 94090. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes as the, as the team comes up for a moment. Let me ask you a question. We did this before, but maybe some of you are going your own way. You don't like the destination you're at. And you're kind of angry at God. God, I thought by now I would be, I thought by now I could retire and not work till I'm 75. I thought by now I would be married. I thought by now I wouldn't be married. Thank goodness, but I am. God, I'm not where I want to be. And I'm upset. I don't know how to get there. How many of you would say that right now? Maybe you feel like you're a little lost. You're giving your life to Jesus, but you feel a little lost. I have good news for you. God cares more about your life than you do. And God is a great God of recalculating the mistakes we've made. Will you let the real time presence, the cloud of God, recalculate your life to get you in the right path? Stop listening to what you think. Stop looking around at other cars, other people where they're going, and start listening to the way maker, the one that showed us the way, the truth, and the life. Let me pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we need to know your ways. We need to know your truth. We need to know your life. Father, I pray you'd show us your ways. Teach us your paths and lead us. For you are the God of our salvation. And upon you, we will wait all the day. Lord, I ask right now, encourage people right now, whatever they're going through, Thank you. You will lead us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, everybody, I want to encourage you with something. You're not called to run alone. God has always sent two or three. Are you connected? We want to, any of those online, get connected to the body of Christ. We have small groups coming up. If you want to be a small group leader, let us know. Just put small group leader. We're going to have these sermon discussions. You can just get a cup of coffee someplace, wherever, or not have to drink coffee. You can drink uh, tea if you're more sophisticated and put your pinky out, okay? That's fine. Drink tea. Get together with two or three people and, and maybe discuss the sermon pray for each other. Or maybe you want to start a walking group or whatever you want to do. Don't go it alone. Get connected to each other, okay, everybody? I want to encourage you. Remember, direction, not intention determines your destination let's choose the right direction because jesus is the way amen amen hey before we go here today i just want to give you an opportunity i forgot to do the last service we have an opportunity to give through our worship you don't have to give you get to give and i want to encourage you there's different ways you can give you can text 77977 and you can give that way you can also use our push pay app you can go to cornerstonecheshire.com 
or you can mail, or there are boxes back there where you can just give. Listen, you don't have to give, but you get to give. And I, I'll, I'll tell you this. Everything we have is from God. When we trust God, especially with our tithes and offerings, I believe in tithing, 10%. I believe in it. You don't have to. It's, it's grace, but you can do it. And I've seen God always take care of my needs. Not my greeds, but my needs. Test me, the Bible says, and see if not, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing you will not be able to contain it. And blessings is beyond things. It's a peace. It's a knowing. God, this is your one. And sometimes I go, God, this is your money. Help me out. God will provide your needs, not your greeds. Amen? So, Father, bless this offering today in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, guys, thank you so much for being attentive today. And it was so good to spend time with you in the living room today. Thank you for being here. God bless you. I, I wish, I'm looking forward to the days we get back together and hanging outside, have a cup of coffee and hang out. I know it's a little bit different right now, but at least we get to get back together. God bless you guys. Have an amazing day.